Hello Community Christian, it's Pastor Myron. I hope you guys are having a great New Year's Day. Hey, I wanted to tell you about some things that are coming up. Next Sunday we are starting a new series and it's our big day. So invite friends to this. <clears throat> We're starting a new series called Better Decisions, Fewer Regrets. We sure hope you can make it because there's going to be a big giveaway that day. So make sure that you come. Also, we're kicking off our community groups that week. So our next session of community groups, if you haven't signed up for a community group yet, make sure that you get in and, and let me know that you need to get plugged into a community group. It is a great time to start the year and just connect with other Christians. <clears throat> now today, I want to talk to you about change. Now, that word can either bring excitement or it can bring terror depending upon what kind of change it is, right? Yeah, you get it. <clears throat> because some change is good, but not all changes we like. We're creatures of habit. Uh, we like things predictable. We like the way things are. <clears throat> but change, when we think about it, is normal. It's completely normal. All creation changes constantly. Seasons change, weather changes, times change, years change. That's the reason why we're starting a new year. People change, our bodies change. So change is inevitable. There's no way that we can get around it. In fact, it's commonly quoted, everything changes except death and taxes. And I'll also include God. God does not change. Now, given that everything changes, we tend to experience change in two different forms, either expected change or unexpected change. Now, expected changes <clears throat> usually are better because it's something that we want. It's something that we desire and we plan for it. And sometimes we even do things to bring about those expected changes. But there's another kind of change, and that is unexpected changes. These are the things that we cannot plan for. We cannot anticipate. But there are things that we can do to help us experience those unexpected changes. Now, one of the things that doesn't change in my life is the need for exercise. As my body gets older, I know that if I do not exercise, I'm either going to get sore or I'm going to get tight and stiff. I'm sure some of you can relate to that. So one of the things that I do to exercise is I go on walks with Bernie. That's my wife. And usually once or twice a week, we go on this very typical walk where we do a little loop. Um, and in this loop, as creatures of habit, we always go in the same direction, right? <clears throat> so Bernie and I, while we're taking our walks, we talk about anything and everything. Uh, that's a place where we connect. We uh, talk about life. We talk about family, kids, our businesses, our nonprofit. We talk about church. We talk about all kinds of things because it's the time when she and I, we can connect. Well, the other day, I went on this walk. Bernie was out of town and I decided to go on this walk alone. And I decided we normally do two laps around the loop. Well, this day I decided to do the first lap in our normal direction, but then I decided to go the other direction for the second loop. What was interesting is as I was going around that second loop, my perspective was different because I was seeing everything from the opposite direction. I saw trees leaning <clears throat> the other direction. I saw a, a field that was much more expansive than I thought because I always viewed it from one place or one direction. So change can be really good, especially when it changes our perspective on things. It gives us a different perspective on life and things that happen in life. <clears throat> Romans 12.2 says this, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. <clears throat> we see in Romans 12 too, 
that it's expected that our minds be changed, that they be transformed. Because in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old has passed away, and new things have come. There is an expectation for Christians. And that, and that expectation is this, that we change, that we go from old to new. <clears throat> we put off the old things because new things have come. <clears throat> but it all depends upon where our eyes are at. Where, what is capturing our attention? What are the things that are influencing our perspective and the way we, we view things? Really, what are we focusing on? Well, that leads us to our last verse. Hebrews 12, 2 says this, Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, Jesus is our example. He's the one that we want to fix our eyes on. We see in Jesus, he had a view of something beyond the cross. He fixed his eyes on the joy set before him. That joy was setting the captives free. You and I were the captives. We were bound in, by our sin. We were captured by that. And he knew that through the cross, we would be set free. Well, Jesus set his eyes on that joy. Well, Jesus is our model. He's our example. And so as we fix our eyes on Jesus, he is going to help us. <clears throat> He's going to help us endure those things, those changes that come into our life, especially the unexpected changes. How do we do that? How do we fix our eyes on Jesus? Well, there's three things that we always need to do. We need to spend time in the scripture. Some people call it the word. We also need to spend time in prayer, communicating with God. Because through communication with God, that gives us that perspective. He basically gives his perspective to us so that we can see life and the things that we do through his eyes. And then the other thing that we can do is spend time with him. What do I mean by that? <clears throat> well, if it's not scripture, if it's not prayer, it's just being aware of his presence. It's spending time doing the things that he does. Oftentimes we go to church. Uh, we spend time on service projects and those kinds of things because that we know that's what he is about. Well, in a way, the Holy Spirit is working through us and he is bringing about change in our life through doing service actions and giving back to God. <clears throat> so, given that change is good and that it's needed, it's actually needed in the Christian's life because it produces this process called sanctification. And sanctification means we're being conformed to the image of Jesus. We're being made like him. In that sanctification process, <clears throat> there are certain things that happen. We have healthy transformation that impacts us and changes who we are. We start to see that getting older means getting more wise. We start to see things with experience in the background in a way to help shape the way we view things moving forward. And it also helps us let go of the past and move toward the future, to embrace that future. Change brings about all of that. Change is important in every person's life. We've got to change. We can't stay the same. Our bodies mature and there's constant change going on. So the more that we can embrace change, the more we'll see his work work out in our lives. Now, as you start this new year, normally the new year means New Year's resolutions, right? 
So you're setting plans and you're setting goals for this year. Well, make sure that those changes include things like what you're planning for in this upcoming year. And also begin to prepare for the unexpected changes. Now, how do we plan for unexpected changes? I mean, we can't expect them, right? Well, no. You put yourself in a position so where the unex when the unexpected changes come, they don't blindside us. They don't take us out. They don't affect us in ways that are detrimental to us. And the ways that we prepare for unexpected changes are by keeping our eyes on Jesus and doing those things to keep our eyes on him. Again, how do we do that? Through spending time in scripture, through prayer, and through spending time with him and doing what he's doing. So I want to just wish you a new year. I pray that uh, this new year brings just blessing to you and that you begin to prepare and plan for this upcoming year. We know that change is coming. So get on your knees, get with God, and prepare for the changes that come. God bless and have a great new year.